Santiago right now. Do you want to? This is what up, Andreas Nicholas. How's it going, Chief Technical Officer? Ladies and gentlemen, and every gender that you choose to be. I'm gonna put us both on camera. Hold on. <laughs> So Andreas fucking bumped into a wall earlier. Oh, is it pissed crazy? off about that bump on his head? But ignore him. I mean, you know, now we know it's there. We're gonna do. So Andreas and I are working uh, on Saint Go Lab. We're in the process of trying to find the uh, best design possible for our our design for our proprietary filter system. Yeah, we're making a graphene water filter, and right now we are laying out the prototype. So once that gets done, we're gonna fish it around for funding and then build the laboratory space. We're pretty fascinated with uh, the surface area to volume ratio, uh, especially in the nano field of less than 20,000 angstroms. And if the pore density can be less than 3,000 angstroms, particularly around two, then then we're pretty we're pretty in hot hot shit right there. Because that I mean, excuse me, I don't know if we're allowed to say fucking that. get it on. All right, cool. I mean, it's gonna be cool, man. Because like basically, we'll be able to filter, you know everything i mean all the way down to radioactive metals and salts uh which are above that so we're our, our, our focus right now is figuring out how to do it inside out or right side in we just talked to a fantastic uh group of companies today at the exposition and we're we're going around you know back and forth on like six different designs i think we've narrowed it down to two different ways that seem right um and we we saw two similar systems not as not as you know, the resolution of their filtration wasn't as high as ours, but it showed the viability of both having it be a bead system or being a a, a enlarged filter system. So we're we're pretty confident that we have the right the right idea. Now. Yeah, we went so we went to a mining expo today called Expoman. Expoman, which is like the biggest, if not the biggest, the probably the most influential mining uh, expo in the world. It's in Santiago, which Santiago is like the number two chile is like the number two mining country in the world chile chile's always been like the the leader of mining technology and they're just not the biggest um output now that australia has just found you know the west west side of australia there's just a lot to dig for but they're you know for the most part they're getting their technology from 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 companies that they find in Chile and from the expertise that they get here. So it's a great place to learn for us. Yeah, it's super cool. We came here just kind of to work on the graphene. And then once we got here, we realized like it's the mining industry. Like the more people we talk to, the mining industry needs filtration because right now they're dumping like nasty, massive amounts of toxic waste into the into the earth or onto like plastic tarps and it's just sitting there. So they basically just keep it there and they, they cover it. And, you know, it looks beautiful because it's got amazing calcium deposits in, in the sulfur and the chloride, but don't want to touch it. <laughs> yeah. So these filters, I mean, graphene, this, this, this material is, it's the one, I mean, this is what's going to help us refiltrate our waste and, you know, revolutionize mining. The viability from its, its poor depth of resolution to the strength that it can just take, can take a real beating, uh, can go m with a pressure that's, you know, multiple times, probably 10 times what, what other filters can handle right now. And, and, and that's just the beginning. Yeah, we, we're working on, so we're starting with filtration. We're looking at also like mechanical properties of graphene as well as electric, electrochemic properties on, you know, like yeah, wires. You can, get, you can get pretty deep into what we can do with it, but that's why we're working on the lab because we want to be the best producer of the material. So, if not in the world, then at least in South America. Yeah, the Southern Hemisphere needs a research, particularly, I mean, this whole continent, man, it, because it's so rich in ore and mining, like copper, which are things you can alloy with the graphene, this is like the place to start it up. And Chile is like, it's like, it's like, I don't know how you describe, just, it's just been consumed by the military industrial complex recently. So money, it's like a money economy here is like a, it's like a modern, yeah, like, I mean, it's. It's more corporate consumption. Yeah, than corporate. Anything. Corporate consumption corporate. scares me a lot more, actually, because that's where you get the GMOs and the aspartame, which has just infiltrated the yeah. country within the last decade. So we were saying it's kind of like when the United States in like '94, when like Diet Coke was really popular. It's right. kind of similar. A to lot that. of Coke Zero going mm -hmm. on. But because it's 2018, we're able to blend like knowledge, you know, and and really kind of bring things up to speed because the mechanical capabilities of the Chilean mining industry is epic the yeah. amount of output that we can we can harness and 
they're really on top of things. They're really they're well educated. They they're listeners. They're they're paying attention to what's going on in China, Japan, and the United States, and so they're they're all about it. They're all about doing it right the first time instead of screwing it up because they've already seen what's happened. And maybe they don't know all of what's happened yet, but they know that not everything's worked out. And there's been major disasters, you know, ecological disasters. Uh, you know, so the, as a, as, I'm, as someone who focuses in environmental science, um, it's great to be able to bring things to the table that we're like, well, did you know this happened there? And do you not want this to happen, basically? And they're like, great, that's why we haven't done this yet. Because, you know, what are the potential consequences of this really great innovative idea? And it's like, well, these are what actually has happened in the past. So we're able to say, hey, careful. And they're like, yeah, we're being careful. It's so it's amazing. Yeah. So the idea is we develop the tech here and then we export it to where like, you know, the hot spots like the Amazon things right. where we where we need to digest plastic and break it down. We've already developed the mushroom digestive system. Or even now there's a new bacterial digestive system that was uh it, yeah, the Japanese are yeah. working on a, a, an enzyme that digests, probably based on the miso. Or, or I've been looking into this as well. But it's basically bioremediation, biomimesis, biomimicry. Like all of these things are are so important, and it, we're trying to use as many natural systems as our basis for how things work as possible because they seem to work the best. Yet humans have not made robots that do things quite as well as hummingbirds and fish and trees and mushrooms. So I mean, as many times as possible. We're trying to use those systems with, before we create ideas for new ones ourselves. It's amazing. I, I was totally uh, brainwashed before to think that we could build robot bees, but I think the idea is just feed the bees. You know, let's give them. Some <laughs> it's a novel <laughs> approach. I mean, but, yeah, <laughs> because you know you can make robot bees, like you can make drones, right? That are really small, and you, you know, or well, Monsanto can, or somebody, and then they could be like flying to the guy's field that paid the subscription for the drones. But, you know, that's kind of the thing about real bees is they're a lot less discriminatory about things like that. They're just looking for good plants. And, you know, it's, it seems like in the end, trying to save one place from famine will just be consumed by famines anyway. So there needs to be uh, an entire people out of the scarcity model towards a more like grosser, uh, you know, eco merchantile system but about creating a better system of not just money, but of, of, of things, of nature, of, of, of agriculture, of, of biosystems, of habitats, and, and, to, and to work with them. I think uh, I'm going to end the video. I think this was uh, pretty informative. Well, this was pretty productive. Wonderful to see you guys again. <laughs> Love you. Any ideas you have, you want to feed us, put it in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll keep telling you what we're doing. Thanks a lot, guys.